Hello everyone, how's it going? So today we're going to be building a web scraping Python application that can track the prices from a Flipkart website. So recently I came across this video by this uh, YouTuber by the name DevEd and he built a Python application that could track the prices from an Amazon web page and I thought it was a pretty neat application and I wanted to implement parts of it using Flipkart's website. So we'll see how we can track the price of this particular recliner. So it's, uh, it shows that it is 91,500 Indian rupees. And I've been interested in this recliner for some time now. It's pretty, pretty costly. I'm trying to buy this for my parents, and, but it is, man, it's very, very costly. I can see that it was brought down from 160,000, 1,65,000 to 91,500, which is low, but if you compare the prices it should have been only i mean you know, if you look into the united states it's only available for 700 to 800 dollars so this is pretty pretty costly yeah it's a powered recliner but um I, I want i want it to come down even more you can see there's no one no product reviews probably no not many people are buying this so it, it's bound to come down when people realize when the manufacturers realize but uh, nevertheless, for now, we're going to be building a Python application which will track this price. And the moment it goes below our threshold, what we want, it will give us a message and then we can go ahead and purchase the product. So with that, what we need to do is we need to use two modules, two important modules. One is called requests and the other is called BS4, beautiful, which is for beautiful soup. And I'll go into that in a little bit. So if you see here, I, I've pulled up the command prompt to open up for you. In order for us to install request, you just need to do pip install requests. And the moment you do that, it will install it for you. I already have it installed, so it's not gonna be uh, doing it for me. But what requests does it, Python has its own library that can interact with web pages, which is the URL lib, but it's very complicated. So people built up, build uh, the requests library, which is built on top of the URL lib. It does nothing but it interacts with the web pages. So you can see the Python library URL lib, but uh, we are gonna be using the request, which is a package which sits on top of it and it helps us in interacting with web pages. The second library you want is pip install bs4, which is for, and uh, you need to use bs4 if you're using Python 3, of course. And bs4 is where your beautiful soup is present. And beautiful soup is nothing but a parser. And what is, what the parser is, uh, it reads the web pages and it can read and identify what each of these modules are. So say for example, I have the Google web page open and if I if you're on Firefox uh, or if you can do this on Chrome or anything and right click inspect element or even view page source. The moment you do view page source, it will open up the web page the back end of the web page and you can see all the coding which uh, the google guys had done it man this is big for a simple web page but uh nevertheless so we're just trying to understand what uh this is so the beautiful soup if you give a variable say uh hey uh, please look out for any kind of item type or any type of language or any type of uh you know variables so these are all functions which are defined in the web page and using beautiful soup you can parse that particular data so let me make it a little more simpler by maybe right clicking here and inspecting the element so i want to see where the about tag is so if you see the about tag it shows that about tag is under the div and id is hptl so beautiful soup if you give a beautiful soup these attributes and say hey beautiful soup go to google and try to find out where the about tag is and the about tag is somewhere in the id hptl so beautiful soup can read the whole html page for you and identify just that particular tag and give out whatever there is for you so beautiful soup is a very good parser and uh, it can read 
these web pages for you and interpret or identify those things that you need specifically. So we're going to be using that for our Flipkart. Uh, the reason for that is because we have, in, uh, this is a very big web page. Uh, you'll see it has quite a bit of things going on. So there's a lot of functionalities in this web page, but we are only interested in the price. This is what we are looking for, just the price. And how do we identify what the price is? So just right click on this guy and say inspect element. So it will open up this developer console and it will show you that the price is defined under this div class. Div class and that's the class name and that's where your price is defined. So that's where your price is defined inside the web page and that's all I'm interested in for this particular project because I'm interested in the price whether it's going up and down. So I have this program up and running. So I commented all the codes, but I'll go one by one and uncomment it for you. So you're just going to be using requests and BS4. The import time command is nothing, but if you're use, going to be using the sleep command for now, let's, uh, let's not use it So to make it more simple. So we're only going to be depending on requests and BS4. So let me, before I go into this program, let me run how requests and BS4 runs. So open a command terminal and let's clean this page. So let's open Python in terminal and import requests. So request, as I said, it, uh, it has the functionality to interact with URL pages. So say, for example, if I was to say result is equal to requests dot get and here I can specify the web page that I want to read say for example we want to read the Google web page so I just go ahead and uh, copy the URL library I go into the command prompt again and I paste it here the moment I paste the requests is going to simply go to Google and gather the whole web page for you the result is where the Google web page has been pulled and downloaded. It is in this variable and this result has many attributes that you can read. But now for our case, we want to read the HTML page. So if I say result dot content, the content is where it has the whole content, the back end of the Google website. So if I press enter, this is what it prints out. This, this has everything in it. So you'll see the about page, you will see the settings, you'll see maps, the image, everything that is present on the Google website. What, the front end, what you see is all defined by these codes have been running in the back end of the HTML. So your result dot uh, content is able to read all that for you. And let's close this. Let's come back to our web page and let's define what these prices, what these uh, functions are going to be doing. So we are interested in uh, this particular section of the Flipkart website where the cost and the price is written. So you come back and we'll see how we can go about it. Here I'm going to uncomment everything slowly. So I'm defining this function in, in a function called check price and we'll call the function here by calling check price so the moment check price is called this function will be executed and it will go through the function one by one so let's see what this function is having url the url is nothing but where i'm going to be defining the url that i have to visit so this is the website so this is the url which i want the requests or this program to handle so this is the URL where my recliner is present. So I'm just copying the, uh, the, uh, the URL from here, copy, come back here and just press. It should be under quotation, so it's a string and you just paste it here. So you have the URL ready. And next comes the minimum price. So as I said, I'm interested in identifying the price of this particular recliner whether it goes up or low and I want to see with, uh, if the price has gone below my particular 
requirement. So let's say if I my, my I'll put my requirement as seventy thousand rupees. We'll come here and we will define seventy thousand rupees. So that's an integer value and it's defined by seventy thousand. Now res this is the next function where we are invoking the requests Python library. So we the moment we call request dot get URL, it's nothing gonna go nothing but going to go to this particular website and fetch the whole URL for us and store it in this result variable. And once it does, now we can call the beautiful soup to read it for us. So let's uncomment beautiful soup. You can see I have this variable called content and we're using beautiful soup. So beautiful soup, it doesn't come directly. You have to import PS4 and then take PS4 beautiful soup from there. So beautiful soup and this is the function where you're saying that beautiful soup is supposed to be parsing the content present in this rest.content and you are defining that it is a HTML parser. The reason we are defining that is because beautiful soup is capable of parsing many other codes, many other pages. But in our case, the website which we are running, since it's an HTML website, the back end, especially what we see here, this is all HTML. So this is all HTML. If you see here, HTML. So we are reading HTML and that's the reason we are putting it as an HTML parser. The moment we do that, now we can go into, so Beautiful Soup has the web page, it has a parser in it, and it's all saved in the content. But in, now content has everything, but again, we are only interested in the price commodity of that page. So let's uncomment that and see how we can find out. So the function for that is using find, and this is part of Beautiful Soup. So if I write content.find, everything that has the div, the reason I'm writing div is because if you see this guy here, if you write this guy, it is defined under this div tag. So div tag is where the price is defined. And we that's the reason we are putting div. But we're not just saying div because everything is almost everything is defined under divs here. But we are particularly interested in that particular div tag which has the class, this class, which is one V C four E, it's all code. So, but we are only interested in that particular div class, div tag, which has this class. So let's copy this class for us. And I'm only trying to find out where this particular class is. So we, we can do this by providing attributes class, which is equal to this particular class. So the beautiful soup is going to read the whole HTML page and look for all the div tags. And it will only look for those div tags which have the attribute class as this guy which we are defining here and once it's defined we want only the text part of it so we we want the string out of it so that it can only give out this region this region because we are only interested in the price part of it so not everything we're only interested in the price which is here so that is nothing but the text part of it if you write if you don't write text and it will read everything so let's see how this comes out and we have the text written now let's uh, print this quickly let's run this and see how it comes out we'll print price div and we'll see how it comes so python i have the website as flipkart price track dot pi and the moment we run we see that it's printing 91500 and this is where it's doing that. So that means it has successfully read the price, but uh, what we need to do now is we need to read just the numbers. We don't need the symbol because we want to compare this value with our 80,000 or 70,000 threshold, which we had put down as our minimum price. And for that to be comparable, you want to bring this 
to an integer value because now this is as a text which is a string and you cannot compare string and integers so we want to convert this into an integer first and for that you need to do some processing the first step would be to remove the symbol uh, remove the comma and then convert all, everything into an integer so we'll see how we're going to be doing that so we'll come here and the first step is we are replacing the comma and we instead of the comma we are just removing the comma so we are writing price div replace the comma with nothing so there is nothing between the inverted commas so it means that it's going to replace it's just going to remove the commas so the moment i remove comma let's unprint and let's print this and see how it comes out so we have here we again run the program and you will see the initially it was 91500 with the comma and now we have removed the comma so now let's let's remove the symbol the logo of the rupee and why did i say logo it's the symbol right i don't know what it is called but uh nevertheless let's go back and we come here and we now try to remove the rupee symbol and we can do that by using this price one so it's going to be removing because uh strings are nothing but arrays so we are excluding everything which is before one so zero is removed because this guy over here is nothing but zeroth part of your array so we're going to be removing the zeroth and only start from 91,500 and we do it here so once we do that uh, we are also converting it into an integer variable because again we want to compare that with 70,000 which is an integer value but uh, the price which we care, took out from here the price tip is in a text form it's in a string form so we want to convert that into an integer by using this int command in Python and the moment we do that let's print this and let's see what kind of an output we're going to get and it should remove the symbol so good now you can see the symbol is removed the comma is removed and it is now an integer value so now we can compare this value with our threshold so we can now compare this with our 70,000 and here we're going to have that if else statement if the price is less than the minimum price which is our 70,000 it's going to print the price for us and it's also going to say that price is low go buy now go buy now so you want to put that exclamation to make it show it that it's urgent and we do exit and that's the end of the program and if the price is not less than minimum it is going to say price is not low yet you gotta wait buddy and done we are again going to exit the program so let's save this let's go back into your terminal and let's clean this and let's run the program let me also uncomment these print tags so we can avoid messing up our command prompt let's go back here and let's run python flipkart price track so it's going to open up rest it's going to read the web page come back compare the value and then give us the output so it says price is not low yet you gotta wait buddy because of course 70,000 is way is way low than what we uh, 91,000 is way high than what we want uh, let's say if I said the price my expectations were 1 lakh so I'm gonna put 1 lakh here and let's save and we are just gonna fool ourselves by saying that the price went down let's run the program and you can say there no new price is 91,500 it is low and we need to go and buy 
So with that, we come to the conclusion of this program where we are able to read the Flipkart page. And this is a very good application. This is a very simple introduction to web scraping. But uh, we, you can see how we can read different parts of the web page and extract that information which we need and make it useful for our own applications. And this can be used for many kind of uh, services. So imagine a blog, imagine a newspaper where you are just extracting information from different news websites and collecting it for us and just putting it on our own blog page and just you know uh, putting the links for those websites we can uh, if you are interested in the stock market and if you're particularly interested in the tesla stock for example so that type you want you're interested in reading everything about tesla so you can create a web scraper and which goes about and reads all all the websites that are posting content about tesla and then it brings it for you so that you can read it so there are many countless applications of web scraping google is nothing but a very big web scraper a very big and complex web scraper which is uh, constantly reading and scraping websites for information so that when you search you can get that particular result that you're looking for so these are all uh, applications and uh, web scraping is a very nice uh, field to get into so we'll cover a few more projects uh, on this channel and hope it helps uh, the ones you're watching and if it helps please subscribe to this channel give a like or leave a comment and if you have any questions you know feel free to ask with that i say goodbye and stay safe